this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Photoshop to make a clone photo of yourself. But before we get to the Photoshop part, let me walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to get the best clone images for this type of project. Starting with step one, which is location. You need to find a location that suits multiple clones doing different things at the same time. But I mean, any spot can be fine with a little creative planning. Step two, a tripod. Get your camera locked down on a tripod so that it doesn't move in between shots. Step three, shooting angle and lens. Get a good angle and the right lens for the situation. Most of the time, this means moving back a little bit and using a wider focal length so you can fit all the clones into one shot. Step four, use a remote shutter or timer if you have it. By connecting a remote shutter or a wireless shutter release to your camera, it allows you to take the pictures without even touching the camera. Step five, camera settings. The two main things to consider here are for shutter speed, if you're just doing still poses, then your shutter can be a little bit slower. But if you have action shots, then you gotta make it faster. And B, because you probably want everything to be more in focus, a medium to high aperture is better. And then finally, step six, take your photos. For this, you basically do one pose, take the picture, move to the next pose, and take another picture, and so on, until you have a good photo for each of your desired poses. Just make sure the poses don't overlap too much, and that they all fit nicely in the frame together. All right, so once all your pictures are taken, it's now time to bring them into Photoshop. So to do that, obviously open up Photoshop and then go up here to File, Scripts, and go over to Load Files into Stack. When this Load Layers window comes up, just go down here to Use. And if you know you've put everything into one folder specifically, then select Folder, and then I'm gonna go to Browse. And you're gonna find your folder. So I know mine is right here, Clone Photoshop. And I'm just gonna double click so you can see that if you select folder, you're not gonna see anything in the folder. So I'm gonna cancel and I'll show you what I see in files. So if I go to files and go to browse and then go to the same clone Photoshop folder, we can see them all in there. Now, I would highly suggest as well, naming each of your clone shots what they actually are. So when they import into layers, they're already named and sorted the way that you want. So I'm gonna go like this now, I'm gonna select them all and click open. That's gonna load up your files into here as JPEGs. And the only other thing you have to make sure to do is click this attempt to automatically align source images. So if you did kind of move your tripod a little bit, this will help line them up properly so you don't have to do it once it's in Photoshop. So click that and then click OK. And as you can see, they're all loading up here. They're gonna come in one by one over here in the layers and they're gonna go by the order that they were in that stack thing. And if you can see along the side here, you can see that Photoshop has already nudged each of the images over so they line up. So if I click this, so we're gonna see this climber one right now. And if we click the eyeball, you'll see the next one. And then you click this, you can see the rest all underneath. And like this one was obviously way off, the tripod moved here. So it had to bump it over to line it up properly with all the other images. And really the next thing that I suggest to do before you do any actual work in here is to rearrange these. So I'm gonna bring this photo here of my son taking a photo to the top because that's the one that's most in the foreground. And I'm just gonna kind of work in reverse. So I know the climber one is basically the furthest back. So I'm gonna put that at the bottom. I'm gonna move the treadmill one next. Then I'm gonna put the computer one I know is behind there and then TV is up here. No, TV I guess would be kind of behind weights as well. So that's the order. So this should be your photo that's most in the foreground and this should be your picture that's most in the background. So the top one's foreground, the bottom one's background. Okay, so now that we're all organized, let's get down to business. And what you're gonna wanna do first is click on the eyeball for every layer but your bottom two. And then you're gonna click on the second layer from the bottom and put a mask on it. This box with a circle in it right here, and then there's the mask. And then what we're gonna do is go over to the brush tool, and we're gonna make sure we have black in the foreground. So if you need to switch this, click this little arrow to flick it around. If for some reason it's not black and white, which it should be, you click on here, and you can select black right here. And we're gonna go up to the top and make our brush fairly large, so something like this, like it's just a little bit bigger than like my son's head here and we're gonna drop the hardness right down to nothing and make sure your opacity and flow and stuff is up to 100 as well. And just in case you don't know, when you're working on a mask, black 
acts as an eraser. So you can see I'm erasing here. And if you flick this to white, white will bring stuff back. So all we're gonna do here is use black to erase this clone. So this guy right here, this one is gone. But if you notice, I accidentally brought a little bit back here of the clone that's underneath on the climber. And if we look at the mask, you can see whatever I painted in black, that's the part that was erased and everything white is what we have left. So we want the opposite of that though. So we're gonna click on here and then go Control or Command I and flip it around. But we still have to deal with this error over here. So what we're gonna do is if you any, have any errors like this, you're gonna go over here, you're gonna bring your size down and bring the hardness up to about 50 and you're just gonna paint in those areas. Okay, so that's good for that transition right there. And then we're just gonna go to the next one. So we're gonna go to the computer layer, click on the eyeball. We're gonna add a mask to it. We're gonna bring our mask, or we're gonna bring our brush size back up to about there and bring the hardness down. And then we're just gonna paint over and erase this guy over here. So he's gone. I'm gonna be careful on this edge because I know I have another clone sitting here. So I erased him out. And then there's no errors in transition this time. So I'm gonna click on it and then go Control or Command I to flip that one around. And now we have one, two, three clones. The next one should be easy too. So click on TV, click on the eyeball, add a mask, paint over this clone. And there we go, that one's gone. Click on the mask, Command, Control, I, and all of those clones are in. So those ones were all pretty easy. There was a little bit of a mess up right here, but now we're getting into the ones that overlap with the other clones. So when we click on the eyeball for weights, we can see that this one kind of overlaps with this clone a little bit more. So when I add the mask on it, I can do the exact same thing though. Click, put the mask on it. I'm still gonna erase him here and he's gone like that. And there really wasn't too much of an overlap there actually, but let's say there was. Let's say that I painted in a little bit more. Remember, all we do is click on it, go Control I, and then we're gonna go up to our brush bring the size down a little bit, bring the hardness back up, and then you're just gonna paint in here, maybe even zoom in, Control plus, Command plus to zoom in. And you're just gonna be really careful around this, the edge of this weights clone, the one that's in the foreground. You're gonna go right along the edge of that one and paint in right along the edge, and then you can paint in the rest over here. Okay, so that one's painted back in. So I've fixed that transition between these two, Control minus, and then that's where we come into this last one. Now, when I click the eyeball on this one, this one I did wrong on purpose for a couple reasons. One, I made it too close so that it doesn't really fit with the rest of them. And he's too bright. He's too overexposed. So I'm not actually going to do the same method for this one. I'm going to, and plus it overlaps with this one, this one, and this one. So if you have one like that, that overlaps a lot and you don't want to like erase around it or anything, it doesn't work then this is a method that you can use. So when you're clicked on that layer, go over to this, which is the quick selection tool. If you don't see it, right click on the fourth one down and it'll be in here, quick selection tool, and then click on select subject. Now, most of the time, this will do a pretty good job in this image because of this like dark area here, it didn't know where my subject ended. So I'm gonna use the minus here, actually zoom in, control plus, and I'm gonna use the minus to get rid of any extra selections that I have. So I don't want that as part of my selection, I don't want, oh, you see what happened there? So sometimes when you're doing this, it will jump more than you than you want it to. So I'm gonna get rid of these. So then you have to go back to plus here and you wanna go along the edge again and add those parts that it took away back to the selection. So if you have anything that's not selected, use the plus to kind of go around and bring all of that back into your selection. So I'm gonna just slide this over to make sure and that's good. And then I'll go back to the minus again and get rid of this now like antenna and this extra little bit right there. Okay, so once you have your selection the way that you want or close enough at least, you're gonna go up to select and mask. And in here, I just like to kinda play around with these a little bit. So I'm gonna feather it a little bit and I'm gonna shift my edge back. There's some better methods like to use this on the hair. Like we can go over to this and uh, you can paint in along the edge here and it'll sometimes it does a really good job of finding the hair. Sometimes it doesn't, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. I'm gonna go Control Z to go back because I don't really want to do that. And then I'm just going to maybe smooth it out a bit and add some contrast maybe. 
Then you go down here and output to instead of selection, put it as a layer mask and click OK. Now we can see right through this person all along the edge here. There's just a little bit of touch ups that we can do there. But since we have a mask again, we can do the exact same thing. So if I zoom in, I can go to a black brush and make sure it's fairly blurry. You want to actually, you know, somewhere around 50 is good as well. And you want to just paint along this edge of this hair to get rid of any extra stuff that was part of the selection that you don't want. So kind of just smooth out that there. And then I'm going to zoom out. And the only thing left to do here is to replace this one because I don't really like where it is. It's too big and uh, kind of looks weird here. So I'm going to go Control or Command T and I'm going to resize this guy. So I'm going to bring him down to like, you know, 85 to 90 percent and just kind of replace him in a spot that maybe looks a little bit better. So maybe right there, nudge him arrow keys to move him down a little bit. And that looks a little better, except for he's still too bright. So if you have something like that, then I'd suggest just using curves. So down here, this little half circle thing, click on it, go up to curves. And if it's too bright, a uh, simple way to do it is to maybe bring this over. Oh, but see, as I do this, it's affecting the whole image, like all of them. So make sure you click this clipping mask. So now it's the curves is only affecting the layer that's right below it, which is this one. So I'm going to bring this over a bit, just to add a little bit of contrast. And then I'm going to darken some of the highlights by bringing this down. And then I'm going to curve it a little bit, give it a little bit of a S curve here. And that's close enough to kind of match with how the rest of these look. But if you do want to uh, make them kind of match a little bit more, you can also add in more adjustments. So going to this half circle thing, maybe like a color lookup or something. And let's just say change it to like fall colors and it'll make them all kind of feel like they're more one image again. If you want to make this into an image now, we want to save it as a JPEG, but we want to get rid of all this extra stuff over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the, you know, so the marquee selection tool here. And I would, for this image, I'm going to start kind of in the bottom corner here and I'm going to make my box here. So I'm kind of looking at the distance between the edge here and the first clone. So about that much, I want about that much on this side as well, kind of like that to balance it out. And I'm just going to add a little bit above all of them, kind of like that. I think that'll be a nice kind of balanced image right there. So then when you let go, then just go up to image and go to crop. And that will be the new size of your project. And now to save this as a JPEG, you just go to file, save as, you know, name it, clone yourself and change this to a JPEG and save. And then I like to crank this as high as possible if I'm not worried about space and click OK and you're good to go. Now you'll have a JPEG copy in your files that when you open up will be the final composite image. And that's it. That's how you make a simple clone image of yourself. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.